welcome back for another amazing episode of the Third Shield Pokemon Go PvP podcast. Guys, today I have a new guest who is a recurring guest of ours, but this time he's a little bit different. The way he's different because now he is not only a legend, but he's also the ADL champion, which stands for Arrow Draft League. So, Lyndon, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for having me back. I'm looking forward to, to catching up. So, first of all, I wanted to talk to you about the ADL champion, as an ADL champion, because that's a new thing that have not occurred before we actually recorded the previous episode. So, firstly, uh, can you please show off your trophy? Oh, yeah. So, this thing uh, came in the mail a couple days ago. And uh, sorry if there's a little bit of a glare. But this is uh, the trophy I won for our, uh, for winning season two, and uh, season three is up and coming. So I'm going to have to do my best to defend it so I can make sure that I can keep the trophy. That is so awesome. I really like that. When I saw that on Twitter, I was like, "Oh my god, that looks so amazing!" Congrats to Elo and Cong uh, Arrow. Congrats to Arrow and congrats to you because that's awesome. And I want to talk about this for a little bit. So first of all, what it's like to actually win this because I saw the roster, and the roster is. Pretty good player, so I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, um, I mean, it was a huge shock and honor to actually win. Uh, going into Arrow Draft League, I was actually a replacement for uh, someone that had to drop uh, on the day of the draft. So, you know, I kind of squeaked in as one of the last uh, seeds, I guess. But, you know, everyone in that group is so, so talented. I mean, I don't want to name names uh, just because, you know, you discredit anyone you don't name. But there's, you know, tons of top players. Uh, including Arrow himself, obviously, but a whole bunch of others, Leap4, um, Cool Cats members, uh, Mazer Gaming members, you know, Speedy, uh, so lots of different folks. Um, and, you know, again, every battle was tough preparing for each match. I honestly thought anyone that I was playing against had a chance to beat me. So, you know, I mean, there was no, there was no such thing as an easy or stress-free match. So obviously it's a huge accomplishment and uh... And, and I mean, first of all, again, congratulations. And then second, would you, would you explain to us what is basically the, uh, this league just for people who don't know? Yeah, definitely. So Arrow Draft League is a draft league that's organized by Arrow, who's an amazing content creator. Um, basically what it is, is he's divided up uh, eight or into two divisions, uh, Ash and Gary, and uh, had, has eight players in each of those divisions. Uh, we each do an independent draft, so each division has its own draft. And then from there, uh, you can't have any unique or any uh, repeating Pokemon. So every team is unique. Um, and it, it really uh, creates some interesting gameplay, a lot of strategy. And you see a lot of Pokemon that potentially you wouldn't see in Go Battle League or even Sylph. Um, so, you know, you, you get to use some different things and, and kind of really put your, your knowledge to the test. I really like that. What what was your draft? What was your lineup? And what did you think about it when you first saw it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, funny, they have free agency. So each week you could change it up. But I, from what I remember, my original draft team was Skarmory, uh, Toxicroak, uh, Umbreon, Wishcash, Alolan Sandslash, which was a bad pick. And then uh, if I remember right, Rainy Castform was my final one. Um, and so, you know, I got way too cute with, I picked a little in Sand Slash in the, in the fifth round, which was, and I played the first week with it and very quickly realized that that wasn't going to work. Um, so I had to make some adjustments, but uh, it was, it was a, you know, it was tough because I wasn't too happy with my team, to be honest with you, after, after week one. Um, but again, was able to kind of get comfortable with the Pokemon I had and, and, and was able to work from there. So what do you think, what contributed the most to able to actually uh, win this? Uh, so I'd say my biggest thing, uh, that was my second ever draft. And in the first one that I had done, uh, I recognized that building cores was really important. So po cores meaning uh, two Pokemon that really complement each other. If they lose to one, the other one beats that one that it loses to. Um, so I, I really focused on that. Uh, the Toxicroak and Umbreon core was pretty solid. Uh, Skarmory um, was just a great Pokemon that I felt comfortable with. You know, I've used it since the beginning of PvP. Um, so, you know, finding Pokemon that you're comfortable with, but then also, um, you know, like paired well with other ones on your team. I mean, Skarmory and 
Wish Cash was, was another one that I relied heavily on. So uh, it, it was good. And I think being adaptive through the draft too was really important uh, because some you get your eyes set on something and then naturally someone else will select it and uh, not, you know, being too sad when that happens or you lose the Pokemon that you really thought you had a chance of getting, you know, gotta move on. So going into the last match when you had a chance to actually win this or do not, how did you feel? Did you think that you're actually gonna pull this one off? <clears throat> So I was playing against Jangles, who uh, is a good friend, a uh, Florida battler, and you know an amazing player. Uh, and he had been dominating all season. Uh, him and Toshi had, had. I played Toshi in the first round of the playoffs um, and was lucky to beat him. And when I was playing against Jangles, you know, I, I actually felt like our teams lined up okay. So I wasn't uh, like I didn't wasn't worried about team comp. But with Jangles, you know, he'll pull off some amazing plays, which he did in our battles and. Uh, again, you know, very easy to kind of get rattled or shook uh, when someone pulls off like a really nice switch on you. But, um, you know, I think I just kind of was nervous, but tried to really focus uh, to make sure that I just played my best and, you know, did the best I could to, to get a shot at the championship. That's awesome because, guys, if you don't know, Jingles was also on our podcast. And not only that, but I think, I don't know if still is, but a few days ago, he was number one on the Go Battle League leaderboard, which is a huge accomplishment. And Linden was also what number two, right? Yeah, I think at a couple points this season, I've been number two. Um, so, you know, just a little bit short of number one myself. But uh, yeah, Go Battle League season six, I think we're on. Uh, has been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a longer season, but I think that's a good thing. Uh, so um, it's been a lot of fun. I've had some success in, in GBL this year for the season. So. And that's a huge accomplishment itself. So one last thing about the uh, AVL. What I wanted to ask you is, what would you share to all the participants for next season uh, as far as you are the new champion and going into protecting your title? <sighs> oh man, I don't know if I want to give these guys any bullets and board material um you know other really just you know look forward to having a good time with everyone again um like i said i i, I wouldn't be surprised if i go from first to last because everyone again is so good so i really gotta spend some time studying on uh matchups with the move update that's recently happened um you know new cores exist that i really need to make sure and we also did something different this year or this for season three which is that we uh have a ban round so we were able to ban uh top tier Pokemon or Pokemon that we wanted. And uh, so it's going to be a little unique because the top 16 Pokemon are the ones that we decided are no longer on the table. So a lot of cores that I'm familiar with aren't, aren't options anymore. Oh, that's awesome. I cannot wait for that. I'm excited now. So uh, I'm very excited. I got pumped from it and congratulations again. Um, before we move on, I wanted to ask you about uh, Go Battle League. So with Go Battle League, um, what? When did you hit Legend? Uh, was it the first part of the season or second part? And which league? Well, that's a good question. If I remember right, I think I hit Legend during Holiday Cup. Um, Holiday Cup. What? At first, what? You know, I wasn't doing very good at it. Um, you know, it was during the holidays naturally. So I uh, was kind of busy with you know personal stuff, um, but then also trying to get trying to get my sets in. And I don't think I studied enough. So I was, wasn't doing very good at, at the beginning, um, but then I really kind of made it my personal goal to try and get Legend, I think, during that. And so if I didn't hit it, then I hit it right after. Um, but yeah, I mean, Holiday Cup was a lot of fun. I know that some people kind of complained about it, but uh, you know, I think that whenever um, Niantic's giving us these different metas, I think we should really do our best to enjoy it and see kind of what, what depth there is there. Uh, Cause I really think that's where the future of Go Battle League lies in these kind of specialized cups. Guys, I want to point out two things before I move on. One is that Linden has a Pokeball earbuds, which is very cool. And then second, <laughs> that is uh, that that what he's keep mentioning is study. I didn't study enough, which is awesome because that's something that you don't hear around unless you're talking to like the world's top 10 players uh, on Go Battle League leaderboard because studying the teams is, I think, huge. And PV Poke obviously helps you out a lot with it. But um, let's talk about that for a second, because you said uh, it didn't do well at the beginning because I didn't study enough. So what does that mean uh, when you say that? Yeah, you know, I, I, I wasn't paying attention to enough what uh, other people were actually running. Um, again, PV Poke is the first go-to resource that I go to for things. But when I think I spent too much time just looking at that and kind of made up my mind on what a team I wanted to run was. 
Um, so, you know, I think if you're not adaptive, um, you kind of get yourself stuck on one thing. And, uh, you know, if you convince yourself, it's really hard to unconvince yourself to so kind of break in that mindset sometimes. Uh, but really, I mean, studying, you know, thinking about, well, what's giving me a really hard time? Why can't I win when I'm in this scenario? Why can't I win when I win a lead? Uh, if those things are happening, you know, you got to ask yourself those questions because if you don't, you'll just keep on repeating the, the losses and stuff like that. All right. That's awesome to hear That's And guys, make sure to take notes on that because it's very important. Instead of just throwing teams around and or copying teams, uh, you need to do that instead. But um, as far as for uh, this season and all the movesets, so let's start with the movesets first and then we talk with Excel Pokemon. But first, I wanted to ask you about how did the movesets throw you around in the league? Did that help you or did that throw you back a little bit or you think it was decent? Yeah, so I, I'd say in Great League, yeah, I, I haven't played enough Ultra since the movesets occurred, um, but in Great League, uh, I've pretty much been running, for the most part, one consistent team, which is uh, Shadow, Obama, Snow, uh, Azu, and Sableye. You know, I've been in a couple, playing against people in, in videos with uh, this team. And uh, so, the Alolan Ninetales showing up has kind of thrown that team a little bit um, on its head, just because Alolan Ninetales can be tough for uh, all those Pokemon. So uh, that's been the one I felt is the most impactful. Seeing more fire around, uh, and for some reason, fire normally feels like it's in the lead. Um, that's been a little bit difficult because the Obama Snow obviously uh, melts <laughs> very fast to fire especially Shadow. So um, those have been the key things I've really noticed throughout it. Luckily, the nerfs weren't as strong as uh, as I think people, some people were expecting. And personally, I think that's a good thing. I think that if you, Pokemon are really uh, expensive to invest in. So if you spent a lot of time building one up, it would be, be, be pretty discouraging for the average player to all of a sudden have like the Holy Grail, like a great Azu. And then for it to all of a sudden not be great, I think I'd be off-putting for some players. So I think they did a, a good job by nerfing them slightly, but not so dramatically that, uh, you know, you feel like all your effort was for nothing. Oh, that's awesome to hear. And and yeah, the, the, the changes definitely shook some team around. So that's that was interesting to see. And uh, as far as for Fire, I just wanted to bring it up because I wish that Fire would have got an update. I mean, that was cool that the uh, Ninetales got a Weather Ball, the Fire, I mean, uh, Kento, but but I think Fire is still lacking the skills to able to uh, be good. And I was hoping that Ember would actually get a better update, but it did not, yeah. it's still disappointed. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I, I think the tough part for the Fire Pokemon is, um, I think some of their stats is, are kind of unfortunate. Um, you know, when I think about a Pokemon like Charizard, um, you know, its stats just aren't great for Great League, especially. Um, when you think about the Fires that we, tend to use a lot. Um, it'd be a Lowland Marowak, which has pretty decent stats. Um, Kanto Ninetales, which has pretty decent stats. And then Sunny Cast Form, which also has pretty decent stats. I think the rest of the Pokemon is just mainly because they're kind of frail. And for, for Great League and for, you know just for PvP in general, um, you want some bulk so that you can work yourself out of tough situations. Um, if you don't have the bulk, you kind of end up playing a little bit more into like an RPS type uh, scenario, which you know works for some people, but um, I think a, a lot of folks don't don't prefer that. I was really hoping for the Ember. It just gets one more extra damage instead of what it got. Uh, that would have been awesome for Brixen. So I feel like Brixen was just that <laughs> short off of that, and and it would have been an awesome. Yeah. <laughs> maybe sometime soon. Maybe maybe they'll kind of revisit and give it a little extra um. <laughs> For sure, I would love that. And then, as far as for uh, the XL, so I feel like that in Great League too. I think the XL, just like we expected, and we were speculating before that the XL would probably throw everything around in Great Ultra and Masters, especially Masters. I mean, it's, you have like no chance right now. But uh, but let's talk about Great League first. So, was there any XL Pokemon that you adjusted or changed, or how did you react to the new meta with the XLs? Yeah, so I think probably the one that I've spent the most time and effort on uh, was getting an Exu Azu. Oh, Azu. Um, so I spent a lot of time during one of the events, I don't remember which one it was, uh, but really kind of going out catching as many Azu as I could uh, so that I could build um, one up. Luckily, I had one that was uh, good rank. And so 
Uh, I spent a lot of time doing that, and I've actually noticed a difference uh, in some of my battles with it. I also have noticed a difference in, in a negative way sometimes, but um, overall, you know, I think that I was pretty happy about that. There's a, a handful of Pokemon I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of XL Candy for. Uh, maybe the, the most would be Lickitung. Um, really look forward to getting an opportunity to get some XL Candy for that, but you know, I think the one difficult part is it, it's just very tough. Um, I feel like it's really dependent on the weather that you have locally, which is kind of tough as well. Um, Cause you know, sometimes you get sunny weather for a week and you want, you know, rainy or cloudy. Uh, so it's kind of just tough uh, a little bit the way the system works, but you know, I think it's exciting cause it does, does encourage people to get out there and go catch more. And I've done that more than I've been doing uh, past year. So, you know, it's a, it's a good, new feature good luck getting snowy weather in florida <laughs> yeah it's not happening <laughs> never never <laughs> yeah exactly and um as, and as far as for uh, ultra league have you seen any changes yet in excel or not yet yeah um you know i think there's a lot of pokemon that benefit from that um galarian stunfisk uh is one that is really high up but you need excel candy uh, Skarmory Altaria, which were two great league staples, uh, need the XL candy to get to, or the, to be viable in, in Ultra. And then even um, some Pokemon like Drifblim, uh, which is a great, great, great league poke. I mean, a great Ultra League Pokemon, uh, but it uh, can benefit from the XL candy. And then uh, again, there's just a lot. I mean, Abomasnow is one where actually it, it loses some matchups by going XL. Um, so, you know, keep in mind, not everything's going to get better as a result of it but uh but yeah so those are the big ones i mean it's it actually i think once people get the time to accumulate xl candy and invest them uh we'll see a very different uh ultra league meta the thing is right now it's still too early um, because of how expensive it is so i don't think we've seen the true impacts yet but maybe like season seven eight uh we'll we'll see it by then and uh, I, you forgot to mention my favorite Perserker in Ultra. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, when I first shared it, it was only level 45 best buddy, uh, and it already had a huge difference on it, especially against Garcilia. But now it's finally absolutely maxed out. So it's a uh, level 50 and it makes a huge difference. So uh, in a mirror match, when you face somebody that is way less, so you can see the difference, but against Gengar and against even Charizard, now you can win with an XL uh, Perserker, and that's huge. So that before never happened. So I'm like, yeah. uh, this is like, this Pokemon is broken and I think they're gonna change that. <laughs> Cause it's really good in Ultra. That's awesome. Um, as far as for uh, the three raids right now. So there's, I mean, three new Pokemons, not new, but the three new raids that are happening right now, which is Ante, am I saying it wrong? And then uh, Raikou and the last one I can't pronounce. So you're gonna have to say that. Suicune. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> so, um, so is any of them viable in uh, raids or in PvP? <clears throat> so I'd say, uh, uh, what is it? It's Raikou is good in um, in Great League. It has Volts, access to Volt Switch and Wild Charge, which we all know, uh, very strong hitting uh, electric combo. And then also has Shadow Ball, which is interesting. Um, it also is a great raid Pokemon. So, um, you know, if you just are just focused on raids even, you know, getting out there and uh, catching as many as you can so you can build up an XL candy stash, that's good. Suicune has some viability uh, in uh, in Great League as well as in Ultra. Um, it has access to Snarl and then Bubble Beam, which, uh, you know, could be like a timeout strat or something. And has had, had some usage in Silk Cups before. You don't see very much in Go Battle League, but um, I think that could just be a knowledge thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, Entei, um, decent in uh, raids as a fire attacker, but honestly, not, not nothing too special. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, you couldn't even say it with straight face that it's decent uh, with Entei. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> anyways, thank you for sharing that. Uh, so now you guys know what to do when you catch one or, or how to raid it for it. Um, and then as far as for uh, Love Cup, have you had a, any chance to look into Love Cup just yet or no? It's a new cup in Go Battle League, guys. If you don't know, it just came out literally today. So if you don't know what it is, that's what we're talking about right now. Yeah, so Love Cup, a um, handful of Pokemon that I think like are red and pink that we're able to use. 
Uh, I have spent a little bit of time looking over it. Honestly, um, not a ton, uh, but uh, I do think that, um, you know, I have some ideas on, on what things can be there. You know, PV Poke, great resource, uh, has Metacham as a very solid Pokemon up there. Um, I think Lickitung is also high, but again, those are both things. Well, Metacham, you probably have um, regular, if you've been around for a little while, um, but it could use the XL boost, so. All right, perfect. Good to know. And uh, not last but not least. Well, first of all, we're gonna obviously look it up and build teams and make sure to check out PV Poke. I'm pretty sure Matthew is busy right now to updating the meta, so we're gonna find out very soon what are the rankings on it. So stay tuned. And then uh, last but not least, I wanted to talk about, of course, the topic that I cannot not talk about, which is esports. So the last time we talked, actually on the podcast, there were no esports teams just yet and no esports players and uh, nothing really about it we were just hoping for it so now that changed a little bit so what do you think where we are right now where we're we heading and what it means to you so i think it's really an exciting time right now um i think that you know uh groups like Mazer gaming getting involved and really kind of uh signing up a whole bunch of you know amazing battlers and then content creators as well um i think they've done a really good job uh, kind of setting some ideas and examples for what's out there for everyone. Uh, I also think that Niantic's done a pretty decent job with game stability lately, which has always been kind of a, a concern of mine. I, I know the community kind of gets upset when it's not working very well, but you know, there's there's some small bugs um, as there always is, but it, it feels like it's been pretty stable. I'm knocking on wood because I don't want that to go away. Um, but so, you know, I think that there's some good, really good opportunity. I know that people are working on some exciting projects to try and, you know, help elevate things. And uh, I do think that with the uh, unveiling of self uh, factions, which uh, I just got to participate in in the self all-star invitational, which was a really good time. I think that once that can kind of get some exposure to and people can see team tournaments um, playing out, I think it'll be really exciting and a lot of fun. And I think that that's potentially where the future of um, you know, Pokemon Go esports could be. Uh, the more I think about it, is just you know team formats. Um, obviously, individual play. It's an individual game, but uh, I think that the ex some of the excitement could come from uh, when we can have in-person events again, and when teams can get together and you can feel the energy of uh, you know top battlers brainstorming collectively, coming up with strategies, and then seeing it play out uh, with successes or or even failures. You know, so. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm very excited about it, and I'm happy to be part of it with you guys. It's it's awesome. I'm really excited. Um, before we wrap this up, I wanted to ask you: Do you have uh, any message that you want to share with the community, or any last words, or any recommendations, or anything whatsoever? Yeah, you know, I, I'd say um, when thinking about our community, we have a, a great community. I think that's why there's so many people. I just uh, encourage players to continue to be welcoming of new players as they continue to get into this. Uh, every game needs to continue to you know, filter and and, uh, and shepherd in new players who are excited about the game. So if you ever, you know, come across someone that is interested in PvP and you feel like you have some knowledge that you could share, you know, be sure to share it with them and get them excited about the game um, because I think that that's really important to, you know, welcoming new good players, uh, finding good talent, and then just continuing to, to see the community grow and uh, be exciting and fun for everyone. So. Let's be a welcoming community. Let's uh, find new ways to get players engaged. And uh, I think that that'll, you know, really make sure this game has a very long lifespan ahead of it. Amazing message, guys. And that's Lyndon for you. He is one of the greatest leaders of this community that I have ever met. So uh, hands down. Thank you. And, and Lyndon, thank you again for coming on the podcast. Definitely, yeah. Thanks for having me, Daniel. I'm a big fan. So I look forward to, to watching myself, uh, you know, when this gets uploaded. And, uh, and again, thanks for having me. I appreciate the time. Of course.